CDC 6600, 1967, Air Force Weapons Lab, Albuquerque, New Mexico. We had one of the early earliest models of the CDC 6600 installed in the lab as a supercomputer, and at the time, the fastest computer in the world. And today's cell phone is a thousand times faster than this big room-filling computer. Yep. So we all had a chance to uh, use it, although it was mainly used at that time for um, weapons, nuclear weapons research, and nuclear weapons effects, both blast and radiation. And so we all got to uh, program it. And then I used it on a missile control system. So uh, we uh, analyzed and uh, this did a stability analysis of the air-to-air -air missile uh, system on it. So anybody remember what else? I ran Scepter on it. Okay. Did circuit analysis using Scepter. And that was one of the new circuit analysis programs of the time. It took uh, probably several hours of computer time on this, so I wasn't real popular. <laughs> yeah, I had played around with spherical trigonometry coordinate system and great circle routes. And so what I did was uh, run routes from a particular country to a, another particular country. And uh, then we got this guy in to give us a brown bag session on uh, Mo a Monte Carlo method. So I decided to incorporate that. And I ended up with a stack of paper about three feet high by all the time all was said and done. And uh, I, to this day, I don't know for sure what it said. But the other thing I can tell you is the turnaround time on the CD6600 was about two days. So when you corrected a program and you threw it back over the wall and it run, compile, and get your results back was about two to three days. And today, if you work on an average system, it could be two to three seconds for the same yeah, type right. of program. Well, it depends on the priority of your systems yeah. because <laughs> we used to get ours back in about an hour if, well, the, <laughs> if the machine was up running. All yeah, right. But hey, that's interesting because it was a batch programming, which most people don't know. So we had um, cards right. and a box of cards about this long that uh, we made on one of those machines that we have out here. IBM what is it? cards. IBM key punch something, cards. key punch. Yeah, key punch and, um, and then we'd submit them through a keyhole, like a, a mailbox <laughs> hole. And the, the techs were in the computer room, of course. And um, so they would take this box of cards, put it in, and then reject it because some damn, damn card had a, yeah. was wrong. So you had to go back through the whole thing, figure out what card it was, what hole was wrong. And, get it going. Sorry, Captain yeah. Zeller, we, we dropped your deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a big one, too. We dropped, and here it is. We didn't put it back together, but here it is. And you worked on it for a couple of days, but it was gone. It was all over the floor, and they, they gathered all up and put it back. From our lab to the computer room was a path across the grass that people be carrying their boxes of IBM cards back and forth to get their computer programs run. And it would come back saying it took three, three milliseconds to run your program, and, and uh, you didn't know what that meant. But. Yeah, so after, after um, a, a day or two to get your program back, you got it back and it said point, point three, ran point three seconds, but, but rejected it. Right. So, after a while, you learn to always keep a duplicate deck. Right. That's right. You're yeah. using that card punch to make that and duplicate always, set. Always your cards, yeah. Too. yeah. Hey, and but the other thing was now that it's just coming back to me is, um, so you know the computers were supposed to um, eliminate the paper, right? Right. Well, we had those. 1200 line per minute machines that's not characters that's lines yeah right and they used to back up a semi truck to the weapons lab yep. unload the paper and then sometimes it'd be a, a you'd get a, a printout of about um you know that thick uh, it could be thicker and and it, there was an error in it so you toss it out so we had down the hall at the weapons lab there were these stacks of paper, because after you, if it wasn't classified, you would put it in that 
and and a big another big truck would come and haul it all back out. But it was a lot of. Um, a lot. One thing I remember that uh, something called computed go tos were much more efficient than uh, subroutines. <laughs> For anybody who remembers go tos, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the the come froms were more uh, more efficient. What the come froms? <laughs> Go, yeah. Rather than go to it, <laughs> come from. Yeah. Come from. So that was the Air Force Weapons Lab in 1967, 68. And, uh, yeah. Let's see, another, another thing was these uh, weapons guys, they thought they had high priority or something, so they had this program called Shell. I don't know what the heck it was, but all we remember was that they would put, they would start the program. This was a pretty fast machine at that time. They would start the program before they left work, so about five o'clock in the afternoon, and then run it all night. run all night. So, and they would say restricted. And if it ran more, they would kick us off. You couldn't get on it. And if it ran till ten the next morning, but that thing would run all night long doing a, a nuclear one simulation, one yeah. simulation nuclear reaction. And then I'm sure they got a bunch of garbage data, threw it all out, and started all over. But we used to get mad at them because they'd always, they had priority, they kick us off the machine. Yeah. That was probably the highest priority though, is the lab commander doing his bookkeeping. Might be his, his checkbook. Yeah, yeah right. But, but we, didn't, we didn't have those kind of programs back then. What else? It's good. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time we wasted a lot of time on this 6600. <laughs> <laughs>